This is Mr. Alexander, and I want to show you today how to uh, make histograms using Microsoft Excel version 2013. And I want to use this example that I have pulled up here on my screen. It says uh, 50 people were asked how often they traveled by train each month. The results were the following numbers. We've got an A, we've got a 7, we've got a 10, we've got a 5, and so on. Um, we're supposed to use Excel to make a histogram and describe the shape, the center, and the spread of the distribution. <clears throat> so let's do the first step of that, which is making the histogram. Uh, I've taken the liberty of creating a list of the data in one of the columns here. You can see it's all in there. And this is the first thing you need to do in order to do this in Microsoft Excel 2013. You need to uh, make a list of all the data and list it vertically. The second thing you need to do is create what we call bins. Now bins are the category labels for the rectangles on the histogram. And we want to list the upper value of those bins. Now to figure out what those bins should be, I usually take the data and look at the minimum and maximums of those. So the minimum of the data is going to be Uh, 2, and the maximum is 80. So I'm thinking we need to go from 0 to 80. Uh, and since 80 is a nice round number, I'm thinking we go by 10. So let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 70. Now I'm not going to write 80 because Excel automatically uh, adds a, a, a bin, like the final bin that it puts in here is more than 70. So since I know there's stuff that's more than 70, I'm just going to leave it at 70 and let Excel create that final bin for me. Uh, now, what you need to do is you need to go to File, Options, and we need to look at our add-ins. And we need to manage our Excel add-ins. So I'm going to click Go here. If it's not already, put the check mark next to the Analysis Tool Pack in the Analysis Tool Pack VBA and click OK. What that allows me to do is when I click Data, there's this bar right here that says Data Analysis. If you don't, uh, if you don't initialize the VBA Tool Pack, that Data Analysis won't be there. So I'm going to click it, and I want to simply select Histogram. Now the screen gives me two things. It tells me the input range and the bin range. The input range, I'm just going to highlight all of my data. And actually, I'm going to change that to A2 because I don't want to get the category label. I'm going to do A2 to A51, and I'm going to skip the, the data label. The bin range, then, are all of these bins. Now, after I've selected these values, you don't want to select the labels uh, because we haven't selected the labels over here, so leave that unchecked. I like to do the output range, and I'm just going to click right in here in this box, and then I'm just going to pick anywhere on the screen, like right there. That's where it's going to put the chart. But it's not going to put that chart there unless I select Chart Output like that. And once I've done all that, I can click OK, and it's going to spit a bunch of stuff out for me. It creates the histogram, which I like to make nice and big. And um, there's a few things we need to fix about this. First off, we can get rid of that legend. You can just backspace it away. It's gone. Um, we need to have an appropriate title. We need to have uh, titles on the axes. And these numbers need to make sense. Um, that's what I'm going to attack first. I know that this isn't 10. I know this is 0 to 10. This isn't uh, 20. It's 10 to 20. It's actually 11 to 20, isn't it? 21 to 30. 31 to 40, 
41 to 50, 50 to 60, and then this would be 70 to 80, we know, but for the last one, it's usually easier, uh, well, it's just 60 to 60, 61, 51 to 60, 61 to 70, and for the last one, I like to just put more than 70. And so that changes all these labels, which is nice. And now I know that this is the, instead of putting bin there, we should put the frequency which people travel by train. And we can leave frequency over here. And we probably don't need a title here because we accomplished the title of this graph down here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, another thing that has to happen with these uh, histograms is the bars. They need to be touching. They can't have any space in between them. And the easiest way to do that, I found, is to go up here into Design. And I like to do Quick Layout because they've got some nice options that kind of take care of the problem for me, if I can find it. Like this one right here. You can see that there's no space in between the bars. But the problem with this now is that I can't really see the bars when I click off of them. So I want to just click on one of the bars, go to Format, and if you do Shape Outline, you can change it to Black. Uh, I guess I need to select all of them, change it to black, and then I can see the, the shape between the bars. Now you can change the colors of these if you want. You can make this one, you know. Um, you can also change the design to make them, you know, some people like to make them, uh, you can do different things like put effects on them and, you know just to make it look nice, whatever you want to do. But now it's pretty easy to see that there are three people between 0 and 10, there are five people between 11 and 20, and so on. So we've made a histogram here. Uh, now, let's go back to the original problem. We're supposed to... We're supposed to be doing three things. We're supposed to be identifying the shape, center, and spread. Well, first off is the shape. Uh, it's not completely symmetric or normal, but to me, this thing has an approximately symmetric shape. I wouldn't say it's skewed left or skewed right. Um, if it wasn't for this 41 to 50, we'd say, yeah, this thing is symmetric. So let's call this thing roughly symmetric. So right here we're going to say roughly symmetric shape. And when it is symmetric, the center and spread are going to be the mean and the standard deviation. So those are the things I need to identify next. Luckily it's pretty easy to do this in Excel. Let's get the mean. We're just going to use the function average. So I'm going to do equals average. And I am going to select all of my data. The mean of this thing is 34.56 which is right in here on this bar. So that makes sense. That's the highest bar. The average should be in there. If it's symmetric, that makes sense. So the mean is 34.56. The standard deviation, you can use the function equals std. Um, we want to use standard deviation of a sample, so dot s and highlight all the data again. You'd only want to use the dot P if you knew you had a whole population of data, meaning you've talked to everybody. 
this is the frequency which every person travels by train. And we just took a sample, so we need standard deviation dot s. And that standard deviation is 23.66. And that's basically all of it. That's how you use Excel to create a histogram, which we did here. To analyze the histogram to figure out the shape, which we said is symmetric, roughly. And since it was symmetric, the measure of center was the mean, and the measure of spread was the standard deviation. Now, if this thing had been left skewed or right skewed, meaning it wasn't symmetric, then you'd be using the median for the uh, measure of center and the interquartile range for the uh, measure of spread. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.